what would you do if random issues just started happening on your network? And how would you begin isolating that problem? In this video, I'm gonna talk about a real world example where uh, multiple network issues were creating end user, uh, poor end user experience, and I'll go into how I identified that problem. Ultimately, we migrated away from a Cisco 3850 core stack to a stack of Juniper EX4650s. And uh, what we were trying to do here was uh, upgrade the, the, the new core to a new core. And so the Cisco 3850, it was aging, it's end of life, and we are starting to uh, make this migration process, right? We had a plan. But the symptoms we are starting to see, even as we tr were tr slowly transitioning uh, downstream switches to the new Juniper stack, was uh, a lot of dropped ARPs, dropped DHCP, uh, devices unable to get an IP address, and people complaining about being dropped on Wi-Fi. And uh, a lot of these issues really started to uh, make itself visible when we started managing the Juniper EX4650 within the MIST dashboard. And so with a Juniper switch, you can manage the switch in the MIST dashboard and get a lot of insights. And so the downstream switches had already transitioned to Juniper switches. And that's where we were getting these alerts for dropped ARP and dropped DHCP. And I, I wanted to know if this was a real issue or something different. And it really identified as a, as a problem because end users started to complain, right? And, and it really started to complain around the Wi-Fi issues because the access points were connected to the downstream Juniper switches. And, and also some of the servers had really slow performance. And uh, even under a one gig interface, there wasn't much traffic going through these interfaces to, to create this poor uh, impact of a slow server. And so uh, it really helped escalate our migration to this new core switch on the Juniper EX4650. Now, what I wanted to do is really troubleshoot this issue and isolate it to determine what the root cause is. Because I, I didn't know if it was something on the new core switch stack or on the existing core switch stack. Because as we migrated users over or switches over to the new EX4650, we did still see some of these same symptoms. And so I relied on some packet captures to try to identify this issue. I narrowed down my point of view of troubleshooting to one individual switch only because it wasn't moving, it wasn't an end user device where I had to talk to this end user all the time. But this uh, this downstream switch was not getting an IP address, right? I needed it to get on a management IP, uh, on this management port, and then talk to the dashboard in the cloud. And it just wasn't getting an IP address. But if we moved it to the Cisco 3850, it would get an IP address. So I thought that, that was really a, a weird issue. So once we reconnected it back to the EX4650, I was doing a packet capture on the VLAN that that switch was on. And, and mind you, I was remote doing all this work, so I relied on some um, on-site uh, remote hands to connect the laptop to perform these packet captures. I also used a command line interface on the Juniper EX4650 to do some traffic monitor to try to um, identify this this issue. So I really started off um, with a console cable on the laptop to the switch that wasn't getting an IP. What I did there was run the traffic monitor just to see if it was doing a DHCP request, right? So this is where understanding layer two and also Dora, the, the DHCP process, your discover, offer, request, what's the A? Accept. <laughs> and... Um, so on that switch where I was consoled into, I did run traffic monitor. I'll include the command in the description, uh, the CLI command, but I was able to see that it was doing a DHCP request. And so I said, okay, I, I do know that this switch is indeed doing DHCP. So I know it's not a problem there and which interface it was doing DHCP on. So then I went to the EX4650, which it was connected to and ran a Wireshark capture trying to capture the DHCP request. I wanted to confirm that it hit this new core switch. And so indeed, the packet capture showed the, that discover and um, the MAC address of the switch, which uh, it was uh, sending it out from. 
So I wanted to then check the uplink interface of the 4650. It, this 4650 uplinked to the 3850 because the firewall still hung off of that, that switch, of the Cisco switch. And so my uh, thought process was, all right, if the EX4650 receives the Discover, I should be able to see the Discover leaving that uplink interface towards the Cisco 3850. And uh, the Wireshark capture did show that. So I was able to see, all right, it's hitting there, but I'm not seeing an offer from the DHCP server. So then I just you know, went forward in the path and landed on the 3850. On the 3850, I wanted to confirm, was it receiving that Discover from the 4650? And so I had the laptop moved to the 3850, performed a capture on um, for that interface. So for, for the Cisco side, I ran, um, oh man, I don't even remember the command. Uh, it's like a span port. Uh, I, and I said, I wanted to uh, capture, receive, and transmit on this specific interface mirror that to the interface where the laptop was connected. I, I was concerned that the laptop might miss some, some packets, but it did end up catching everything uh, as far as I can tell because uh, by the end of it, I did end up figuring out what the problem was. But I did see the Discover coming into the 3850, the Cisco 3850, but I did not see an offer from the DHCP server. Now, I, I was able to look at another interface on the 3850, um, and this was specific interface uh, that went towards the firewall because that's where the DHCP server lived. This was on the firewall. So I started to span that port as well. And I would see the discover. And to my surprise, I saw the offer come in, right? So once I saw that offer, I really started to look at that up, the, the interface in which the Juniper and the Cisco connected. Because I would see the discover come in, but the offer would not be sent back to that to that interface. And so what what I found was that the MAC address of the switch was not being added to the MAC table of the Cisco 3850. So once that uh, offer came down from the firewall, the switch looked at that and said, "Where am I supposed to send this this frame?" And it didn't know where to send it because it's supposed to send it to the, the MAC address of the switch that was hanging off the 4650. And because that MAC address wasn't in the MAC table, it was just dropping the, the frame and therefore the DHCP process failed. And so as I started looking into the MAC address table, I was wondering why it wasn't adding it. So I started to add a uh, static entry for that switch and it would still not send the, the frame out to that interface. So I tried clearing the MAC address table. Maybe it needed, uh, maybe the MAC table was corrupt and that didn't fix the issue. So ultimately rebooting the switch was my next process. So I rebooted the switch, but we still had that same issue. And this issue, I narrowed down to this specific switch because it was similar to other issues we had on the network where printers weren't getting an IP address. And this had to do with printers that were connected downstream of the 4650 and had to get an IP address through the 3850, right? Had, the traffic had to traverse the 3850 to the firewall. And, and because of those packet captures, I was able to basically go to the customer and say, here's what I'm seeing. The 3850 is dropping these frames. And I don't know what else it's dropping at the moment, but it could be related to other performance issues we're seeing on the network. So that escalated our migration plan to, to just move the remaining uh, downstream switches that were still connected to the Cisco switch onto the 4650. So as that process was going on, I decided to look into maybe there's a firmware version that captures this as a bug and an, upgrade, uh, an upgraded version would fix it. And, and I did see a couple of bugs there because the version that the, the 3850 was running was fairly old and even the next version up resolved issues like dropped uh, ARP. It, the, the switch would silently drop ARP packets. And so to me, like that, that, that really shows that reasons why you should keep your devices up to date. Um, 
and and they were having these issues even prior to the discussions of moving to a new core switch. But after we had migrated to the 4650, that really cleared up a lot of those issues. And we saw a dramatic performance increase even to their servers. Like going into the GUI of some of these servers was very snappy. It's very quick. And then also a lot of the drop ARP and drop DHCP, all of those just went away. And, and users stopped complaining about being dropped on the Wi-Fi network. We haven't had a ticket come in about Wi-Fi users unable to, to join Wi-Fi and, and uh, unable to browse or have drops. That has all since gone away as well. And so some of the lessons learned uh, here is understanding how layer two works, also understanding some layer one because some of the issues we saw on the 3850, we were seeing a lot of discards, which ended up being some cosmetic issues. But also once we cleared those cosmetic issues, because um, pr previously we upgraded to another version to get rid of the cosmetic issues, we were able then to see which, which interfaces were actually having discards. And um, that also helped escalate the migration. And so there's, there's a lot of things when troubleshooting that even in these dashboards that provide you network insights and maybe some AI, they're able to uh, bubble up these issues, but sometimes it's difficult, still difficult to figure out what is causing the issue. And so being able to understand switching architecture, because even upgrading to a new core, I had to right size it and even size it for growth. And um, I think being able to understand how the switch architecture, how how MAC address MAC addresses are learned on the switch, how ARP works, what the DHCP uh, process looks like, um, what the network architecture is, and understanding the path of which uh, data will flow, all of that really helps to narrow down an issue, especially um, uh, knowing where to start, knowing what commands to run, and knowing how to do some packet captures to try to get the, the proof of why an issue is occurring. And um, ultimately, we're now in a, in a better state, having migrated away. Uh, and I think even, even when I think about where they were before, they had outgrown that switch, so they needed something that passed a lot, a lot more traffic, and they need to upgrade to 10 gig. And so a lot of these interfaces were still connected to 1 gig, even moving to the 4650. But we still saw a huge performance increase as they continue to use one gig. And, and now we're in the process of going to 10 gig. And so that's just my experience uh, I wanted to share with migrating from one switch to another uh, on the core, uh, for the core network. And uh, I encourage you guys to share what your experiences are when it comes to migrating. And if you have any questions, leave some comments down below. But if you wanna see more videos like this, uh, give me a like, uh, hit the like button there, and I, I will try to make more. Thank you for watching.